Well, I kind of want to go. I'm very tempted to go to the Tentacle House, but I know it's probably not the best idea. Look at the Miss Brewsters. An elderly man with thick eyeglasses shuffles up to you with a determined expression. Before you can react, he shoves some meat in your mouth and shouts in your ear. Operator? Operator, get my worthless son on the line. C Mister, I'm not a payphone. That's what the last payphone said, and I'm not buying it. Let me talk to my furk slug in your son. I... Uh, bzz, bzz, bzz. I'm sorry, sir. The line is busy. Please try again later. But probably Gavin with one of his floozy girlfriends. He shuffles away angrily. <laughs> you gain five meat. <laughs> Blah. <laughs> Ooh, more hobo code. The code says nice lady, but she only likes salesmen. Ah, well, not super useful to a non hobo, but at least you get some translation practice. The door isn't locked, hidden inside? As you enter the boarding house, you discover some kind of hullabaloo, or perhaps a kerfuffle. A stern looking middle aged lady is surrounded by six agitated men all talking over each other. Gentlemen, I assist you settle down at once. We won't want to get to the bottom. We won't get to the bottom of this with all you acting like panicked school children. Miss Brewster, you gotta call the cops. How with the, this town calls police, I wouldn't trust to solve a jigsaw puzzle in a serious crime. I'll have these hooligans turning in my house upside down. But there's been a m murder. Somebody has to do something. But what you can do is all go to your rooms and let me think. Good gracious. I'm gonna fly up the stairs. The bastard's still fidgeting nervously. Talk to the woman. Um, excuse me, Miss Brewster sighs, exasperated. I'm sorry I don't have any vacancies. Well, I suppose I do, but I can't let you have the room until this whole mess has been sorted down. One of those medicines, something about a murder? Yes, it's absolutely ghastly. One of my lodgers was murdered in the night, and nobody heard or saw anything. I'm practically at my wit's end. I'll offer to help solve a murder. Maybe I can help. My name's Lichvin Alexander. I'm kind of an independent investigator sort of thing. <laughs> a private investigator, if you will. Oh, like the Belgian fellow in the mystery novels. What? Oh, sure, yeah. Well, that's marvelous. If I can solve this, if you can solve this mystery, I can pay you quite reasonably. Okay, it's a deal. Thank goodness. What can you tell me about the victim? He was a traveling salesman. All my lodgers are traveling salesmen. What did he sell? Well, they come and go so frequently. I'm afraid I don't have the foggiest idea. Well, how did he die? I I'm not sure. The body's missing. Look, you better just go and have a look for yourself. He was in 3C. I locked the door so that no one would mess around in there. All right. Another cup to be found at the dining table. Miss Brewster keeps this place spec and span. A little note next to the phone that says, Do not use phone. Good to know. Oh. It's a real little pocket of nothing. It's just kind of sort of hard. Yeah, maybe we should ask Jessica about it? Nah. The spotted flower saw nothing. Tiny old paintings of previous borders. Interesting. It's just good to go to Oh. Something tells me something's wrong here. I got a weird suspicion that she's actually the one that killed him. Knock on the door. You should probably check the, out the crime scene in 3C before trying to interview the launchers. Oh, 3C, duh. It's rooms... Rooms 3C, at least side of the incident. You lock the door and put the key in the secret pot. You use for things that you won't need to ever... Need to be referred to again. <laughs> Good to know. You step into... Room 3C and discover... Holy crap, a massive pool of blood on the floor. And like Mr. Brewster said, there's nobody in sight. Investigate. Oh, wow, that is just blood. Holy jeez, how... Is there even this much blood inside a person? I guess we'll find out. I'm gonna fish in the <laughs> fish in the blood, as any good uh, private investigator might do. Uh, nothing must be shallower than it looks. This rug looks pretty ordinary. Check underneath it. We looked up the rug and what the, uh, the heck? There's a crazy occult diagram underneath it. The lines and glyphs appear to have been burned out to the floor. You can see little blobs of mental candy, met melted candle wax at the points of the de de decagram. And even it smells weirdly of faint incense. Was this thing at a ritual killing? Great, like a regular old murder wasn't enough. The door trip is locked, hmm. Oh, no, your watchman. No clues here. There's also a mirror. Check yourself for clues? Yeah. Look at yourself in the mirror. Hi, Zetchvin. Smile. Hey there, good looking. Oh, I can change the face, too. That's neat. A fish, why not? A handful of clean water. Nothing interesting about the bed except that it's next to a massive pool of blood. The window's locked, so the killer must have come from inside the house. Oh no, <laughs> the call was coming from inside the house all along. Okay, oh, I should probably report to Miss Brewster first. Oh, Mr. Brewster, I have a look in room C. Did you find anything? I found a huge pool of blood. It was really gross. Did you find anything else? Yes, actually. <laughs> in a cult which will circle. Oh, what? Oh my goodness. You think it was some kind of black magic sacrifice? I'm afraid it looks that way. Yes, ma'am. Well, I've already sold the largest religion of no business of mine, but they won't stand for this one bit. 
Are any of your legends involved with the occult, do you know? Hmm, I do recall that one of them specialized in selling occult supplies and paraphernalia. But I'm afraid I don't remember which one. I'll have, you'll have to ask around. Okay. Doing some investigating here. No response, but you shut the door at night, but the door is locked. Hmm. I'm 2D, but you're really they're all 2D if you think about it. Ah, <laughs> uh, good one. For a flat 1D game. I guess two to I'm sorry, two dimensional. I'm fucking stupid. I Jesus, you knock on the door and a nervous looking salesman peeks out. I'm warning you, I'm armed. Oh I know you. Yeah, I think we met before. We all you sell derringers, right? That's right, yes, you should buy one. There's a murder around those. Actually I'm investigating the murder. Oh thank god somebody is. What do you know about the other salesmen here? I know that there's a guy who sells a cold stuff. I give him a weird wide berth though. All I know about him is that he doesn't live in the room below the sunglasses salesman. I see. Neither of them are the victim, by the way. Oh thank you. Good to know. Knock the door and the sales and pokes his head out. Yeah, what can I do for you? I'm investigating the murder. Oh uh, yeah, real grisly business. Do you know the other salesmen that live here? Not really, just the guy who sells those little derringer pistols. He was complaining about the guy who lives right above him. But th that's the trinkets and bubbles guy, because he keeps making a rapid about dropping stuff on the floor at night. That probably doesn't help you much though. Well, that's something, thanks. Oh, this is a fucking logic puzzle. I figured it was like setting out to do that, but... Who's there? I'm not opening the store with a killer on the loose. I'm investigating the murder. Do you have any information that would help? There's a salesman who here who specializes in cold stuff. That seems pretty suspicious to me. Which room is it easy in? I'm not sure, but he, it isn't the one above me. He doesn't live at the same end of the hall as the victim, either. Thanks. Not the one above him, so... To be... Yeah, this is a logic puzzle. So... Knocking the door of his calls out without opening it. Hello? Hi, I'm investigating the murder. Well, do you, how well do you know the other salesman here? I don't know any of these guys. Although I think there's a guy who sells brushes who's neighbors with a guy who sells paint. Pants? Okay, thanks. Knocking the door on the door and the salesman looks at Hello, who are you? I'm investigating the murder. What can you tell me about the people who live here? Well, I keep pretty much keep to myself. All I know about the other salesman is that one of the one who jokes sells so jokes and gags isn't the one who lives next to the one who lives above the so one who sells brushes. What? Nothing, thanks. Knock on the door and the salesman opens it. Hey there, something I can help you with? Well, I'm investigating the murder. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, I was hoping you could give me some information about the people who live here. Hmm, I don't really know any of those guys. There's a fellow that sells jokes and gags somewhere on this floor, I think. There's a guy that sells pants, but all I can tell you about him is that he isn't the guy right below me. Sorry. No problem. Thanks, anyway. Wait. Oh my god. I'm gonna lose my mind. So... The jokes and gags guy. The one who looks... Brushes. What did this guy sell then? The brushes salesman lives next to the pants salesman, so... The brushes and the pants salesman are here. The one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. The salesman sells her, isn't the one. So... Is the one who doesn't answer the one who sells brushes? Don't kill me, it's you. I have to offer to sell you to drink her, but again, but I said to keep, to keep them all handy until the murder is caught. All I know is that the occult salesman doesn't live in the room below the sunglasses salesman's, and they're both still alive. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it. It's not the end of the same hall as the victim. It's the brushes guy, I think. So you sell trinkets. This guy sells jokes and gags, I'm pretty sure. Doesn't live in the room, but the pants hawker doesn't live in the room right below me. Of course, that doesn't mean anything because it's negative negation of. Ah, this is a pain. It's a weird shadow pocket or pouch or something. Reason sad. That seems like a really bad idea. Are you sure? Yes. I can't stress enough that you shouldn't do this. I might give you some kind of shadow disease. Or I might just ban your hand killing off or anything. I'm gonna do it. 
Well, alright, it's on your head, or hand, rather. Don't come crying to me if something horrible happens. Whatever. You stick your hand right into the hole, grab the first thing your brush fingers brush against, and yank it back out. You get an item, Shadow Hot Dog. The shadowy pocket vanishes with an otherworldly pop. Shadow Hot Dog, a sausage-shaped hole in reality. It has been placed in your regular hot dog bunk for your convenience. Good to know. Okay, I have a whiteboard for a fucking reason. <laughs> I never thought I would be using it for this game specifically, but here we are. I need to grab the markers too. This is a full-on murder investigation. I don't know why I went into an accent there, but whatever. So... We got two... So 3C was the victim. Then we have the Derringer Salesman on 3, 2D. Occult Salesman is not, so Sunglasses Guy is 3A. So therefore the Occult Guy is not in 2A. Doesn't leave at the same hole, end of the hole as the victim, so therefore it can't be 3D. The guy who's. Yeah, so the guy who sells trinkets in, is in 3D. The brushes salesman lives next to the pants salesman. Brushes next to pants. That might be downstairs, actually. Hang on. I think I gotta tell her who is... The salesman who sells jokes and jags isn't the one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. Oh, God. I hate, I hate sentences like this because it's just so roundabout and confusing. So, the salesman who sells is not the one who lives next to the one who lives above. So they don't live next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. So the one who sells brushes is on the bot is on the second floor. So the person who therefore sells pants is also on the second floor as well. So they're on the second floor. This marker sucks. Good lord. I didn't think I'd have to do this this early. Not even early, I just didn't think I'd have to do this at all. Second floor. So brushes. So the guy who sells jokes and gags isn't the one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. So so the joke, guy who sells jokes and gags is then... Yeah, I'm pretty sure the one that sells brushes is in 2C. And so the one who sells pants is in 2B. And then... The Pants Hawker doesn't live in the room. So the Pants Hawker then is on... So the Brushes guy is 2C. Pants is 2B. And then... Wait, hang on. The salesman who says, sells jokes and gags isn't the one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. So the one that sells brushes... Right, so the sales and gags one is on the third floor then. So it can either be 3B or 3... So it's got to be... Wait, hang on. The salesperson who sells jokes and gags isn't the one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who sells brushes. So they, like, brush this guy... But that doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't live above, so I think the sales, the sale, jokes and gags one is the victim. I'm pretty sure. Which makes sense, like it kind of foreshadows it, oh, this all being a joke or something like that. I gotta make sure that I... Some high heels shoes I'm carelessly left, left in the hallway. You're not sure which aspect of the world this would upset Miss Brewster the most. Extra high heels. That's been a murder.
so... I think the Akolka is in 3B, then. Because sunglasses is not... So... That's the nice thing about it, is that we can rule out... The guy who says occult stuff is different from the guy who sells sunglasses, too. So... The gags and japes and the derringer salesman. So... The last salesman, I think, is the... The trinket salesman. The occult salesman doesn't really live in the room below us, so that's not true. So, in the room, they're both still alive. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure it's 3B, although I might be wrong. Excuse me, Miss Brewster, who lives in 2C? They didn't answer, the door's locked. It's because 2C is my room. Well, well, can I have a look inside? Certainly not, that's private. You can't possibly imagine I would kill one of my own lodgers. That would be terrible for business. I guess you have a point there. So, Miss Brewster sells brushes, then? Wait. I don't know. I'm gonna go with my guess. I figured out who the occultist is. Maybe we've confronted him with it. He'll let the confessor give us some usable information. Are you certain you know which one these? I'll have you accusing the wrong fellow. Do I only get one shot at this? Let me double check my notes. I think it's the brushes and the sale. Like, so. Putting everything together, I think so. If Mrs. Brewster is telling the truth, then that is her room, so that can't be it. So then. The guy who sells jokes and gags isn't the one who lives next to the one who lives above the one who's... So I think jokes and gags was 2-3-C. Um. You know, I have a sneaking suspicion. I'm pretty confident now that I know which one it is. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But... Yeah, I'm pretty sure. All right, shall we gather everyone together at the scene of the crime so you can do a dramatic reveal like in the novels? Uh, sure, if you want. I must say, this whole murder business is simply dreadful, but it is the, the most interesting thing to happen to me in years. Uh-huh. Get up to 3C, and after a few minutes, Miss Brewster meets you there in, in tow. All right. Well, yeah, I suppose you're all wondering why I gathered, called you all here today. I assumed it was so you could tell us who did the murder. Yes, that was my guess, too. Right, yeah. Right, yeah, well, as you can see by the square circle on the floor, this killing had probably had a cult significance. Therefore, the most likely candidate is the cult good salesman, who is in 3B. What? No, I mean, yes, I do sell occult supplies, but that isn't even one of my circles. Are you actually accusing me of murder? Wait. No, I'm not, actually. Because I'm pretty sure it's a joke. No, I'm pretty sure you didn't kill anybody. Some of the wardrobe fly doors flies- I knew it! I fucking knew it! God. No, some of the wardrobe door flies open and a salesman jumps in. Haha, I fooled you pretty good. Oh, pretty good, because this guy sells jokes and gags and stuff. That's right, how do you like my giant fake rubber pool of blood? Isn't that a scream? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. A victimless crime. Oh, I got an achievement. Neat. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Here, let me give you something for being such a good sport, kid. We're in good health. A foot's ring. This ring bears the insignia of the Fraternal Order of Traveling Salesmen, which is difficult to make out of this small size, but it might be a farmer's daughter. <laughs> More likely to catch a traveling salesman. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta roll this blood back up, and nine people in this tiny room is eight too many. Well, I must say that went quite satisfactorily. Here's your plan, young man. You've earned it. Thanks, glad to be of help. I'd say I'd call you if I ever need your services again, but I think one exciting thing happening every, here every few years is quite sufficient. If it happens again, just, I'm just going to throw everyone out. Good idea. Ah, sorry. Wait. Oh, look at that. They're called tools, but in this case, there are three of them. The rocks in this plunder have accumulated quite a bit of grease. There must be might, must be because of their proximity to salesmen. Sorted grease. You can tell that this is used for something horrible. I 
Okay, so where do I go from here? The Tentacle House? Tentacle House, maybe. Or maybe St. Polycarp's. You come across a wall with a joke scrawled in it. It's only sort of ribald. You get more ribald. You reverse the ribaldity of the joke, and in doing so, increase the ambient ribaldity of the surrounding area. Victor is still really agitated that those ashes being stolen. Not his ashes, you get what I mean. Oh, how? It's you. Have you found your missing ashes yet? Not yet. Don't get your rosary in a knot. Wait, so. There's a book here. There's a hymnal in the back of this pew. Yeah! I just get an, an unpleasant hymnal. Ugh. There's something unsettling about this book of hymns. Maybe it's the word that the fact that every instance of the word God has been replaced with some kind of weird shifting inkblot thing. Interesting. Wait, so I can look for the the urns, which are different. I guess guess book. Read it. So I guess I'll have to talk to Charles then. Oh, there's a hobo card. It says meat stash, fourth tree that left a church back row. Interesting. Wait. To left a church. Okay. There's a little coal in this tree. This must be what the, ho the hobo card is talking about. Well, that's a wallet. Thanks like, kindly, old, old hobo. Old, old wallet. Nice. Maybe there's some meat left in it. 105 meat. I'm in the money. Nice. Wait, so I can use in I for inventory and stuff like that, so I don't have to keep clicking it all the time. That might be more. That might be beneficial. Yes, please. Oh, neat. I can go like. Um. Nothing hovers towards you. I mean, something hovers towards you, but that something is literally nothing. Let me try that again. A thing that appears to be a hole in physical space, the opposite not just of matter, but of existence, hovers towards you. Through it, you can see the faint twinkling lights of ancient dying stars, and the black smoke drifting out of it appears to be more of itself, more nothingness, or perhaps anti-thingness anti leaking into this world. Is that a better description? I think it'll have to do. Well, here comes another one. The one, the orb still is into black smoke, and I don't know, angst probably. <laughs> Tartholomew grows stronger. Nice. Talk to Charles. Charles Wallace. Hey, is there any electron to check key? Oh, Chuck key, right. What am I supposed to look for? To do list. A few side quests. Charles Wallace lost to Chuck key somewhere near the antique store. Pines and spirits are the cigarettes for the rest of the uh, at August uh, Church's house. Okay. That's helpful that they give you side quest stuff too, like the indication. So I guess I'll just wander then. You see a glint of metal underneath this nearby bush. Hey, this must be that thing Charles Wallace lost. Nice. Perfect. I didn't need to test the coal against that too. You take a wrong turn into an underground coffee, coffee house just as a thinly mustachioed man demands any decent person to define. Defend the formal vulgarity of Joyce's Ulysses. Defend it. Move to tears. The mist man kisses you on both cheeks, leaving wet mustache hairs in your, in your skin. Interesting. Okay. Found his Chucky. Yeah, I found it. That's it. Thank you. Where did you find it? Under a bush. Yeah, probably that bush I was drilling holes in the other day. What, now, can, what can I do for you? I refuse to go to sleep until I find all these mysteries. And go to the tentacle house. That sounds like a lovely place, full of wonder and joy. You stop dead in your tracks when you see those three of those weird fishermen looking around the mouth of an alley up ahead. They're peering around with their glistening, staring eyes and glaring at you the quietly until one of them notices you. It and its two companions start stalking toward you, making what growling sense. Oh jeez, what even are you guys, Glorb? Well, 
Are you evil invaders, or are you natives that were displaced by urban development, seeking to reclaim what's rightfully yours? The fishermen can cover briefly. Evil? Okay, thanks, as long as we're on the same page. Sewed in the hole! You shake the dubious Stroder cannon until the bowl starts to rattle, then pop the tab and hurl it at the fishermen. It explodes in a spray of sweet carbonated water, which they like, and glittering... <laughs> glittering aluminum shrapnel, which they don't. The confluence of these two conflicting emotions confuses them plenty enough for you to make your escape. Oof! That was close. Oh, lovely! Wow! Delightful. The tentacle horror house behind. Either someone's pet kraken escaped, or someone opened a port of the waggle dimension. Ugh. Oh my god, really? Don't judge me! It sounds like this house used to be quite nice. Tall ceilings, nice wallpaper, fencing molding everywhere. Now, however, the wallpaper is peeling, the plaster is crumbling, and there's tentacles poking out everywhere. It's a real fixer-upper. Hello, anyone call for a tentacle exterminator? I don't think anyone call for a tentacle exterminator. But if you want to do some do some pro bono extermination anyway, I also don't think anyone's going to stop you. Well, except maybe the tentacles. Let's go. Oh my god. Oh sweet, the master colony roaches in the walls. This house is a real peach. The stove is remarkably clean on the outside. Oh yes, all of the fifth is on the inside. I guess that, that, that makes sense, I guess. These tentacles must have been in the mood for a snack. Give them an attack instead. That's a big spider, Jesus Christ. That is a massive spider. That is very concerning. Wetlands barking spider. That's weird that they walk around. I don't like that very much at all. You sliced him and diced him. Tentacles head... Tentacle skin hat band? You're not entirely sure what the inside of a tentacle is any different than the outside. But if it is, this is some of the outside part. Okay? Delicious. Great. There's exactly one drawer left in town. Do you want to try fishing here? Let's get fishing here. Fish in the sack. Eh, I don't care that much. I'll check the... Junk mail and fuse. Nice. The refrigerator, this refrigerator almost certainly contains horrors beyond your reckoning. Give me them. Oh, uh, no, no horrors, just very old food. Oh, that's horrors in of itself, you know. Three tentacle... Three tentacles have erupted from the floorboards here. Interrupt the erupters. I'm gonna use one of the cola grenades. Why not? Oh, fucking hell. I regret doing that. Turn the spider noises off. Okay, yes, I can. I'm... I'm... I... Oh, like, I like the arachnophilia, I'm not gonna choose the arachnophonia, just because it's really uh, disconcerting. This door is locked. Go upstairs. Rickety stairs look up to the second floor. Oh, good to know. Surprisingly clean wardrobe. I'm thinking it's for a single ho coat hanger. Wire coat hanger. Even the second story isn't just with tentacles. Okay, sure. Hey, hey now, that's enough of that. Oh, that's bad. I'm gonna try the the dubious tent the killer grenade. I might it might it probably will kill me. I'm gonna take that risk. God damn it. Alright, Gabby, I believe in you. Oh, I should have he was bummed out because the Zetrin was defeated. Oh my god! How? It's too bad there's no bed left. It just might have christened your fault. Losing that fight made you really mad. You know, you got enough XP to buy a skill and make your character more powerful. Hey, hey now. Fuck you. <laughs> Effects. Or basic skills. I'll do Air of Mystery, why not? If certainly that certain je ne sais quoi that makes it seem like nothing can bother you. Okay, let's do this again. Why would you go after me instead? Why would you go after me?
go, Spire. Let's go. Nice. As this is my who rendered this room slightly, very slightly less terrible. This is my sworn duty. This night stand is mercifully, mercifully tentacle free. A jewelry case and the tentacle house key. The top drawer is filled with dirty handkerchiefs. Bleh. You find a jewelry box and the key in the bottom one. Good to know. The store is barred from the other side. If the bar is anything like the rest of this house, though, it wouldn't take much to break it. That height crunch. Okay, it was a little harder than expected. Okay. Termites have conspired to make it look like this wardrobe has had one giant take bite taken out of it instead of many thousands of tiny ones. That stone is better, but mostly intact. Creepy locket and an old wallet. The inscription leads Melinda by love with pictures, just a crude drawing of a single eye. Nice. This bed must have fallen victim to especially hungry, hungry bed bugs. Ironically, this house's backyard looks really nice. Good to know. Guess we're going down to the basement. Click you, you leave the key. Yeah. Cool, good to know. I'm so excited. The cellar is way dark for you to go to any further. Yes, you have a flashlight, but you, only you and I both know that flashlights are only good for making dark places visible, not for making them any less scary. That's boring. The fuse box is escaped. All the fuses are missing. That explains the lights, I guess. But right now, it's like a slight less less dark. Also, Jesus Christ. Oh my god. This is the dirtiest broom you've ever seen. The world's dirtiest broom. That was the dirtiest broom you've ever owned. You haven't actually seen them all, but you can't imagine the dirtier one than this. Holy dang, what is that thing? Oh, good lord. I don't want to know. Red tentacle thing, Jesus Christ. Down with your stats. Ugh. Ugh. No, not the friendly spider now. This guy. Try to take this guy down, I guess. Oh, can heal too? Oh, God. Reduce all of its stats down to well, one, I guess. Oh god, this is gonna take so long. Nice. Maybe not as long as I thought it would be. Bleeding is like poison, except that it continues throughout the round. Interesting. Hey, nice. We got it. You won those tentacles has have wiggled their last waggle on the giant mutant around, probably in a better place now. Good to know. 
here's the problem. There's a hole in this bag of tentacle seeds. Some of them must have fallen on the old dirt floor and sprouted. Tentacle seeds? Excuse me. Dispose of the bag and pick up the handful of remaining seeds. Tentacle seed. Grow a tentacle to aid you in combat. Interesting. This washing machine needs to be replaced and repaired and completely replaced. Washed it and repaired and... Oh, so. Mildew jeans. You plunge your hands into the foul water left inside the machine and find a pair of nasty old pants, referring to the, the, both the, their condition and their style. Mildew jeans. Shadow Rift, step through. Hi! Hi, hello. I'm an eye, apparently. Oh god. A piece of eye. Oh my good lord. A piece of eye. That's concerning. This is very concerning. This is so strange and concerning, I don't even know what to do. I don't know what I'm doing, but I ho hope, hope, hope it's a good thing. I hope this is a good idea. The wrapping's working up for negative energy to run a pair of dark shorts. You should ask about Jessica, Jessica about this next time you see her. Can I pick it up? This is so strange. I don't know what's going on. Should I get away from this place? Yeah, sure. Just a regular house. Okay, so... Is that all the areas around here? I gotta go find cigarettes, I believe, as well. This is a strangely discolored patch on the curb next to a sewer grate. Nice. Glowing ooze as well. Fieldman and extraordinary. How oh, interesting. <laughs> extraordinary audition. Tent Beagle. Trench Spork. <laughs> interesting. Can I get to that spittoon now? The spittoon has been placed at a really challenging kind. Hey Dan, your spittoon is kind of inconvenient. No, no, baby, that spittoon ain't is for spitting it in. That's gotten out of style now that mass-produced cigarettes are readily available anyway. Now that's a bona fide historical artifact. What, really? That's right, it belonged to a famous adventurer from Frisco, right? Just before the turn of the century. Really? Who? Ah! Oh, that's really cool! Oh man, well nobody is exactly sure. A lot of people think it belonged to Mumfler Fumperdink. It's a strong theory, but because... Oh wait, that's Mark! That's Markiplier's character! Because that there's one thing we know about that cat, he, it's that he loves spittoons. But other people say it belonged to a fellow with the last name of Thurnillion. Thurnline. A whole lot of other people claim it belonged to a whole lot of other people. But there's one thing we know for sure about the spittoon. Whoever it was, whoever it was they didn't use it for spitting they wore it as a hat. What? Ew, gross. Haha, <laughs> right? They sure got into weird, some, some weird stuff back then. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, that's Mumpf for Funkverdink. That's Mark's, Mark's character from this game. I like that's cool. Where the hell do I get cigarettes? <laughs> Flute music is the best medicine? This book was published by the International Association of Flautists who are not doctors and should absolutely not be taken as actual medical advice. I'll take it. Five plus five, all stats and ten meat. Okay. Interesting. Okay.
I'm just gonna grind around for a bit and run around. No way to, to wherever. You run into a cool guy wearing some cool sunglasses, strutting down the avenue. Hey, baby, what's happened? A uh, hide. I can see you dig the shades. You've got good taste. I would. The what? I like my sunglasses, so gotcha. I don't think anyone calls them shades for at least another 20 years, though. I pride myself on being on the cutting edge. Flies open his coat, showing you rows of sunglasses inside. Care to buy a pair for you? Only 25 meat. Sure, why not? Sure, it's a deal. Now that's what I'd like to hear. It, he takes your meat and expertly selects the best pair of sunglasses for you from the lining of his coat. Get an item, sale of sunglasses. Looking good, baby. Don't nice doing business with you. Continue on your way. Oh, nice. The side one kisses your eye. <coughs> Put your Friday special bean. Nice. There's his empowered. Take that bean. Well, I'm entering the streets of Western City. You encounter man, man carrying a medium sized piece of luggage. Not brief enough to be called a briefcase, but suitable as a suitcase for more than two suits. Hey there, friend. You look like someone who appreciates a fine pair of pants. Do I? What does that even look like? Astute, discerning, even dare I say, perspicuous. I don't know. But if met anyone who dared say that word to say that word before. Listen, I've got a pair of pants that here that is going to knock your socks off. What? He opens his case and pulls out a pair of slacks that are oddly stiff and shiny. Feast your eyes on these babies. What's up with them? They're wax, guaranteed grease proof, and they're all yours for only 20 meat. Okay, it's a deal, why not? Okay, there's one pair of pants you aren't gonna regret. I'm probably gonna regret it. And mostly a strangely discolored patch of carpet. Yep, okay. So there was the, um, the Glockenspiel flyer. Gideon's Glockenspielery. No, I know where the Glockenspiel store in this. Good to know. Hi. Hey, hi. Hello. <laughs> as soon as they noticed you, those Glock, Glocken guards started playing a menacing tunes on those Glock, their Glockenspiels. Well, as menacing a tune as it's possible to play in a Glockenspiel anyway, which is honestly not particularly menacing, but their intent is clear. Hi, hello. We've had fun to you. Well, when I go look at the building behind you, the old Glockenspiel spot, that is our hideout. You're in there now, lad. Now, uh, please? No, it is for, only for gang members. That is the whole point of a hideout. I wanted to talk to your boss. Have an appointment? You have an appointment? No, can I make one? No, I want to buy a Glockenspiel. You have good taste in musical instruments, but our Glockenspiels are not for sale. Oh, come on, everything has a price. The price of a Glockenspiel is no meat. N nine meat? A nine meat? I'll pay you nine meat for one. That joke does not fork even. Our time for not Glockenspiel businesses. Weird. This goblin looks a bit tougher than the others, all this is at the back of the room, so they're probably the boss. They look both delighted and outraged to see you, since the tricky combination of motion smash, and let's go with excited. As you step closer look closer to the speak of the goblin, you notice that they appear to be wearing an authentic German lederhosen, rather than the makeshift shorts and suspenders get up that the other glockens are wearing. Not that you're an expert in the traditional European fashions or anything, though. They sneer at you with glittering eyes, so you break into my house and unbeat my art guys together? Thank you, thank you, King Gunter, the boss of the clock in this defeat. You paused for a second to parse this. Actually, I just want to talk. Ha, you thanks to Albans are pretty stupid, I bet, but we have one, another, another, other thing coming. If I don't feel like having a conversation about goblin intelligence, can I just say yes and then we fight? Sure. Then yes, goblins are super dumb. Oh, now you have done, now you have it done. I am super angry now. So, if we have now a fight, yes, um... All the Glockens here and here playing excitedly Glocken spiel fight music have gotten together pretty well up. This might be a really tough fight. Is there a peaceful solution to this? A peaceful solution for you and my home invading? I suppose you want that I just let you leave this. Um, yes. Okay, bye. What, really? No. Oh, I can interrupt them. Reach around behind the goblin and tap them on the opposite shoulder. When they turn to look, you definitely snagged the metal out of their hand. Huh? Hey, where is my mallet went there? It was wild. You were playing so fast you accidentally threw it out, right out the window. Don't worry, I'll save your place while you go here, here look for it. Oh, thank you. The goblin is piling furiously on the Gawkins field. It sounds like a background music they used in the war documentary. <laughs> the documentary was about dog fighting raids made by an air force entirely consisting of butterflies. Hey, could you maybe... Jeez, you're really sweating up a storm. I'm so tired, but I must on play. The hands and the rest of them look really sweaty. You could probably yank the metal mallet out of the right end of the grass, but that would probably kind of spritz, sweat spray range. Ugh. Okay, I can't- I can't stand being in here. <laughs> it's just a lot. Okay. I need to leave and maybe go to sleep as well. A trolling street- Uh, stop. Please, please, please. Leave it- leave it alone. God.
Okay, thank God. I was gonna lose my mind if I kept hearing that. Dear God. Is that attacked by some kind of weird shadow monster? I got attacked by some, like him, like a like sort of crazy abstract nightmare thing. Yeah, you've seen them? Nope, never. Murray did though. He described them to me once. Did he have some oh, kind of ultra scientific name for them? Yeah, weird shadow monsters. Is there anything I could do about them? Well, here, take this ring. Mary gave it to me, and I and said I could use it to banish them if I ever got attacked by one. But they never have, so you might as well take it. Great, thanks. I found a little weird hole in space. A what? Like a weird sh a sort of shadow pocket sort of thing? Huh, you didn't put your hand in anything, did you? Yeah. That was here at Hot Dog inside. Did you eat it? Uh, no, don't answer that. Look, I'm just going to suggest that you don't do that again. Okay, you're going to, though, aren't you? I guess we'll find out! <laughs> Jessica opens the door at this room, folks around inside it. Charles did say something to a pair of pliers to ionize them or something I didn't catch. Ah, here they are. If you've seen any more of those things, you should be able to close, use these pliers to pinch them close without actually touching them with their hands. Oh, neat, thanks. How does this help finding Murray? I just got not to dispute the importance of collecting these word artifacts or anything, but I'm worried about Uncle Murray. How is this helping find him? I guess I didn't really explain that. See, the Detector Tron 1000 is new. We only recently really got it up running after Murray disappeared. He always searched down artifacts in more hands on ways. Research, networking, following rumors, that kind of thing. That last artifact he went after, it could be basically anywhere, but the Detect Detector Tron only detects the nearest artifact. I see, so if you figure out we pick up them up in order, eventually we'll find the one they was looking for. Right, I wish to hell that he'd left a note about where he was going, but I guess he either thought it was too dangerous and didn't want us following, or he just rushed off all excited like a kid in a toy store. That's Murray for you, yeah, that tracks. Okay, hey Zuchin, before you go to bed, I need you to approve a new tenant for the store for next door. What? Why is that up to me? Somebody's gotta do it. There's three applicants for the place. Okay, what are they? The first applicant is Truncheons and Bludgeons. This fellow is really excited about weaponry. The second is La Table and Chanty. It's like a high-end kitchen store, magical utensils and the like. And the last applicant is Jardware's Hardware. I guess if the name is Jardware, your options for rhyming business names are pretty limited. I could use a hardware store. Okay, I'll get him moved and get the next storefront ready up for applicants. Thanks, Charles. Hey, it's that right from the boarding house. Miss Brewster must have given it, had it sent to you as an additional addition to gratitude. Maybe she, because... I guess she hates the way it looks and thinks it's cursed. Either way, score. Cool. Neat. What? Was this flower from? I was saying, plant a tentacle seed in it. It's your little tentacle buddy. T Weird. Weird. Don't like that. You can barely keep your eyes open at this point. Okay, I'll go to sleep. Why not? What the, what's the worst that could happen? Besides my suitcase being on fire again. My favorite plan's gone. It's Jeff, the kid who used to bully you in third grade. Make amends. Hey Jeff, listen, I just know her failings, okay? I understand in retrospect that you must have had problems at home, and I just want to know everything is okay now. Jeff wants the overdue library book out of your hands. Oh, I see. Since this is just a dream version of you, you're still as much of a jerk as you were in third grade. Jeff suddenly punches you, knocking out all your teeth. Hey, if this is actually happening, I'd be really mad. <laughs> you gotta pick up your teeth and walk away. Your teeth. Oh god. Huh. That's this guy. It's your sp that spooky nerd from the refrigerator factory. Oh, who invited him to your dream? Excuse me, I need to get past you, I think. You do not belong here. In my own dream, I think I'm the literally only person of existence who does belong here. This dream is only partially yours. The central vicinity is under different ownership. Whose ownership? I should think an obvious. I have claimed this religion of your dream space for my this region of my dream space for myself. And who are you? Accountant Gen Terrence General Point Dexter, decidedly not at your service. I would tip my hat to, but you do not merit such a gesture. Fine by me, that hat is creepy and evil looking anyway. Point Dexter's eyes narrow. He points the weird device he's holding under his hat. It starts beeping in a faster, regular pattern. Do I take it to mean that this hat appears unusual to you in a visual sense? Well, yes. Putting it mildly, it's like an anti hat. I must inform the president. You want to talk to President Coolidge about your weird hat? You have misapprehended both subject and object. It's the real person that must speak with them. The topic of the conversation will be you. I see. Indeed, you are seen far too much, in fact. When we next we meet, I will prepare a remedy for this complication. He steps off the edge of whatever it is you're standing on and plummets into the nothingness below. Well, that's a troubling bit of foreshadowing. This bookshelf is not behaving the way bookshelves do when you're awake. 
You grab a book at random and the bookshelf pops out of existence. You get an item, Vibrations of the Nether Zones. It's hard to tell what this book is about because it won't stop shaking. Red's Combat School, Jazz Hands. Let's head our way back to the waking world, step through. Hey, it's the cool guy. Hello. Lovingly, a man in an expensive suit is standing at the foot of your bed. <laughs> Who the heck who are you? You may call me Don Toblerone. I represent a certain organization of, shall we say, like-minded criminals. Organized criminals like the mob? Wait, you're the Don of the local mob? The mob boss in my room, personally? No, 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 I'm not the Don. That is my, my nomenclature. It's an abbreviation for Donald. Well, that's confusing. But it's been a matter of some confiscation, yes. I do have a sobriquet, but I don't care for it very much. What is it? Donny Thesaurus. I'm gonna have your cousin to guess that they call you that because you'd like long runs. That's very astute of you. Of course, this is institution comes as no surprise to me. My associates tell me you handled yourself well during the conflagration of the refrigerator manufacturing. Do you actually own a thesaurus? <laughs> a thesaurus? I'm here to propound you for consideration in a certain proposition. Come again? I'm here to make you an offer. Oh, can I refuse it? Certainly, though. Your refusition would be, say, shall we say, an advisory. What's the offer? <clears throat> From time to time, my colleague, colleagues and I have certain requirements, but lack the necessary manpower to achieve them. At such junctures, we make lucrative arrangements with certain capable individualists. We find ourselves at this moment in the juncture, such as the junctures I have this subscribed. So you want me to do contract work for them? I've exactingly. No, I guess sure, why not? An excellent decision, if I may articulate such. So what happens now? Just say, sit tight as they say, we will call upon you telephonically. He gives you a curt nod, then leaves the room sit through the window. It takes him three or four tries to quirk the hatch. All right, then. That's going to be where I leave it for right now. I love this game to death. It's getting very weird and very eldritch, and I love it. Look at his little tentacle dancing in the corner. Anyways, that's all for me today. Bye.